Ever felt cornered when someone questions your carnivore diet? This is a common experience for many who choose a meat-centric lifestyle. Today, we aim to arm you with facts and counter-arguments against the top five criticisms thrown at the carnivore diet. From fiber myths to cholesterol concerns, phytonutrient fallacies to red meat and cancer claims, we're breaking it all down in a simple and easy to remember way. So let's equip you with the right information to defend your carnivore diet. The first argument we often hear is about fiber. There's a widespread belief that fiber is essential for maintaining gut health and regularity. Your doctor might even tell you this. But let's look at the facts. The carnivore diet, contrary to popular belief, has shown substantial positive effects on gastrointestinal issues. A study conducted by Harvard involving over 2,000 people on the carnivore diet reported that a staggering 97% experienced improved or resolved stomach issues. While the study isn't without its limitations, such significant results cannot be dismissed lightly. You might wonder, how is this possible? Well, the answer lies in our evolution. Humans, by nature, are a carnivorous species. Fossils from 12,000 years ago reveal high nitrogen-15 ratings, indicating a diet heavily reliant on meat. We possess acidic stomachs akin to other carnivores and survive the harsh conditions of the Ice Age primarily by consuming meat. Unlike herbivores that can convert fiber into short-chain fatty acids through fermentation, humans aren't efficient at digesting fiber. In fact, reducing fiber intake often leads to improved gut health. So the common belief that fiber is critical for a healthy gut and regularity doesn't quite hold up. Now it's worth noting that the carnivore diet isn't just about excluding fiber. It's about consuming nutrient-dense, high-quality animal foods that provide all the necessary nutrients our bodies need. And contrary to what you might hear, these foods can contribute to a healthier gut without the need for fiber. So, next time you hear someone say you need fiber for a healthy gut, remember the facts. Remember the Harvard study and our carnivorous nature. Remember that reducing fiber often leads to improved gut health, because at the end of the day, the carnivore diet is about more than just excluding fiber. It's about embracing a diet that's in tune with our evolution and our body's needs. And that's a powerful thing. Turns out, reducing fiber often leads to improved gut health. Next up, cholesterol. A uh, hot topic, isn't it? Cholesterol and red meat are often mentioned in the same breath, with the former being painted as the villain of the story. It's a common belief that consuming red meat leads to high cholesterol levels, which in turn, could potentially trigger heart disease. However, this is a misconception that needs to be addressed. It's essential to understand that cholesterol isn't the enemy. It's a vital substance that our bodies naturally produce, and it plays a crucial role in cellular functions, the production of hormones, and even in the synthesis of vitamin D. In fact, without cholesterol, our bodies would not be able to function properly. Now let's talk about red meat. Humans have been consuming it since time immemorial. Our ancestors thrived on a diet rich in meat, and they certainly didn't have the issues with heart disease that we see in today's society. It's only in the early 20th century, with the advent of processed foods and the introduction of seed oils into our diet, that heart disease became a prominent cause of death. So, if cholesterol isn't to blame and if red meat has been a part of our diet for thousands of years, what's the real culprit here? It's the modern diet, laden with processed foods and unhealthy oils, that's causing the spike in heart disease. The argument that red meat causes high cholesterol and therefore heart disease is based on outdated research and ignores the complexity of our bodies and our diets. It's a simplistic view that doesn't account for the importance of cholesterol in our bodies or the harmful effects of processed foods. It's time to reassess our understanding of cholesterol and its role in our health. Instead of fearing it, let's appreciate its importance and focus on maintaining a balanced diet that includes nutrient-rich foods like red meat. So, blaming red meat for modern diseases doesn't add up. What about phytonutrients? Aren't they essential? Now, this is a question that pops up more often than not. Many folks swear by the importance of these plant-based nutrients, but let's take a closer look at this belief. Phytonutrients, also known as phytochemicals, are compounds produced by plants. They're believed to have health benefits and are often highlighted as a major reason why we should eat fruits and vegetables. The idea is that phytonutrients can boost our health and protect against diseases. Sounds good, right? But here's the catch. The belief that phytonutrients are essential is based on the assumption that they offer unique benefits that can't be obtained from other food sources. But is this really the case? 
Let's delve a bit deeper. Firstly, it's important to remember that humans are not herbivores. Our bodies are designed to thrive on a variety of foods. And yes, that includes meat. Meat is a complete source of nutrition. It provides all the essential amino acids, vitamins, and minerals that our bodies need. And that's not all. The nutrients in meat are highly bioavailable. This means they are easily absorbed and used by our bodies. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, vitamin C. It's a common misconception that meat doesn't contain any. In actuality, fresh meat does contain vitamin C, though the amount is less than that in fruits and vegetables. But here's the kicker. You don't need as much vitamin C on a carnivore diet. This is because the absence of carbohydrates in the diet reduces the body's requirement for vitamin C. So, are phytonutrients essential? The answer is no, not necessarily. A well-planned carnivore diet can provide all the necessary nutrients your body needs. In conclusion, while phytonutrients aren't harmful, they aren't the be-all and end-all of nutrition. A diet rich in meat can cover all the bases and then some, and remember, the absence of carbs in fact improves vitamin C absorption. So the next time someone brings up the phytonutrients fallacy, you know what to say. Lastly, the claim that red meat causes bowel and colon cancer. This claim has been floating around for quite a while, causing worry and confusion among many. The main point of contention here is the association of red meat with the incidence of cancer. But let's put this into perspective. Most of the research that links red meat to cancer is observational. These studies often lump together people who consume large amounts of fruits and vegetables with those who eat ultra-processed foods then label these processed foods as meat. But here's the catch. Not all meats are created equal. A grass-fed steak is not the same as a fast food burger. The quality and processing of the meat matter significantly. The World Health Organization classifies processed meat as a Group 1 carcinogen, the same group as tobacco smoking. But remember, the risk is not the same. While smoking increases your cancer risk by a staggering 2,000%, processed meat ups it by 18%. A considerable difference, wouldn't you agree? Moreover, the healthy user bias plays a massive role in these studies. People who eat more red meat often have other unhealthy behaviors. They might smoke, drink excessively, exercise less, and consume more processed foods and sugars. All these factors contribute to an increased risk of cancer and other diseases. Now let's consider the carnivore diet. Hundreds of thousands of people following this meat-based diet have shown no increased risk of cancer. This evidence, although anecdotal, is vital in challenging the overarching red meat and cancer narrative. So, it's important to remember correlation does not imply causation. Just because two things happen together does not mean that one causes the other. The real issue here is not the red meat itself, but the processed foods often disguised as meat. In conclusion, it's vital to differentiate between high-quality, unprocessed red meat and low-quality, processed meat products. So it's the processed foods, not the meat itself, causing the concern. To sum up, the arguments against the carnivore diet don't hold up under scrutiny. Let's refresh our memory on the main takeaways here. Fiber, often hailed as a necessity for a healthy gut, is not crucial to our diet. In fact, studies have shown that a carnivore diet can reverse gastrointestinal issues. The notion that humans are not designed for a meat-heavy diet is a fallacy. Our ancestors survived on meat and our bodies are built to digest and absorb nutrients from it efficiently. Cholesterol, a natural substance our bodies produce, has been unjustly blamed for modern diseases like heart disease. But remember, processed foods, not red meat, are the real culprits behind these health issues. Concerns about the absence of phytonutrients in a carnivore diet are unfounded. Meat provides all the essential nutrients our bodies require, including vitamin C. Lastly, don't be swayed by claims linking red meat consumption to bowel and colon cancer. These studies often fail to differentiate between processed foods and natural meat. Each of these arguments against the carnivore diet has been debunked, backed by scientific evidence and historical data. To sum up, the arguments against the carnivore diet don't hold up under scrutiny. Remember these points the next time someone challenges your dietary choices. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out these other videos on the screen. And a huge thank you for helping our channel. I genuinely appreciate each and every one of you. See you next time.